Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. I have another uh, ECM repair video here. Uh, this time, well, as usual as I do, it's a preliminary test to confirm the customer's concerns and to make sure that indeed the computer is the issue. All right, so this is a 2004 um, Nissan 350Z. Uh, his concern is this is a crank, no start, no communication with the engine computer, and no fuel pump signal. All right, so I have the computer connected, as you can see, and I have also the line that goes over to the fuel pump, and I'm grounded in it, you know, like using a test light for and the start of the fuel pump relay, because this is what the computer activates is the relay. I'm going to take you over to the actual um, wire diagram. Give me just one second. This time I'm using ProDeman, uh, sorry, Chop Key Pro, which is the same thing. Um, the reason I use, again, these wire diagrams, I really, really like it, is because all these links. Um, let me take you back to where the actual fuel pump relay is. I already got mapped out the actual location and everything. But the nice thing about ProDeman for the ones that I'm not using on a Chop Key Pro is that first, um, if I click here where it says fuel pump relay, this will open hyperlinks, will open like guided component test, component location, so I can see where the relay is located. It says fuel pump relays and IPDM, see figure, and that's the IPDM, which is perfect because I can see it in full screen. I can, you know, get up higher and it tells me where the fuel pump relay with two clicks. For us diagnosticians, for technicians in the shop, this is very, very important. You don't want to be like looking at just uh, wire diagrams, what is the product now, what is the company location, where is, you know, testing. This is really, really good. I mean, I'm really, really happy with the investment because I can also, this is all snap on software. If I go up to component guided component test, it's going to tell me, you know, the corner ramp for like the fuel pump in this case, right? Because that's what you will be checking. And then mm -hmm. how, and then how this should look as well. So this is very, very nice. Again, all right, going back to the wire diagram. Uh, so we have what I'm looking at in here. Let me make this a little bigger so you guys can see this better. See, I like also that I can use the red cursor for the mouse and then you guys can see what I'm pointing. So this is the actual fuel pump relay. We're going to have a load, which obviously is going to be the closed contact. This is a normally open. So when it's not energized, it should be no power flowing to this, which is going to the fuel pump. But the computer is in, com is in control of the actual, again, control wire. So we had in the other side of this relay, we got hot in a star. Had, this is hot in on or a start, so ignition and a start. So the fuel pump will always be hot as long as you got the ignition on. So we have power going through this coil and waiting for the activation, which is coming from the computer. And we'll see, I can again select the wire. And the nice thing about again, Chopkey Pro is that I over um, identifix if you have a break in the wire, will stop there, not with uh, Pro Demand or Chopkey, either one will be the same software so <clears throat> if we follow this wire as you can see selected in there and go over to now the engine computer again let me zoom in a little more and it's nice these are all uh, made um, wire diagrams but we can see here fuel pump relay so it's pin 113 and that's exactly what i am with this purple wire here again i have it going in through a test slide to see the activation. Uh, that test slide is like 400 milliamps, so it sh should be perfect for here. I use it all the time for all the computers, so I know it's good. All right, so I was already working in here, so I want to share what I was doing. So I'm going to completely get out of here. I'm going to do an auto scan. And the first thing that you will notice, well, if I turn this on, right, that will be important is we got five more reference, which is Usually these computers, when they have a damage on the voltage regulator or internally on the computer, you lose communication. And the first thing you notice is you got no 5 volt reference, but I have 5 volt reference and I can read the beam number. So um, this is not like he said, I, I have communication. 
hmm so i'm like okay let me keep going right so i'm going, going to select the, the vehicle more again leon sorry lee diaz not leon lee diaz you'll see with your big number Let me just cover his phone number so you can see the indeed that is the same bin number that he wrote in this piece of paper. Last digit of the bin numbers as he has is 101462, and that's exactly what we got. So everything is there. All right, so I'm going to do an automatic search because this same will, um, I'm going to confirm it says this bin matches multiple different cars, so but based on what we have is a 350c and that's 2004 so yes and here we only have the engine computer so i'm going to select the engine computer i'm going to enter there again try to see if we have communication thing that i want to explain in here one difference is when you turn the computer on this computer will try to activate that relay for like the prime right when you turn the ignition on in the car it's not the same in here because of of course it's everything is not connected to the car to that voltage regulator to that computer so that's the only difference that i can see here so <clears throat> i can go over to full codes which uh, let me actually read the full codes reading the full codes i can see u1000 communication can network okay so he is he's right we got the ASCD switch, which I think is for the fuel pump, which actually, you know what? And instead to think, let's go over here, right? We got Chopkey Pro right here. So let's go P1564 and see what that is. Oh, that's actually for the cruise control. So that's not, see, that's, so don't guess. We have the thing in here, so let's use it, right? I don't see the one for the fuel pump, but so we go over to actuation test. We got the fuel pump relay. So before I jump into there, I also have the oscilloscope ready to go. And now it's a stop because I was just uh, looking at the one side I have, uh, which we can check through the DLC. I got pins six and 14. You know, this is a kind of network computer. So I'm going to just plug this in here with one hand, so bear with me. And I'm gonna to have to change the settings that I have on the red channel because obviously right now, oops, I turn it off. I have to change the filter to megahertz and then put three. And we're also going to change the voltage to 10 volts. And what is this so weird? <clears throat> See right now, this is not acting as it was. Let's see if a channel is connected here. Let me remove this fuel pump. No, it's not doing anything because it's not being activated. Sometimes it's very hard to do this one-handed and I wanna, you know, this is a, do this as a one-shot video for you guys and for him, something must have changed. So let me just close that and I'm going to open it again and reselect the oscilloscope because I had the CAN network working perfectly. Although I did try to operate a fuel pump and you'll see the results in a second. <clears throat> so channel A, which blue channel is, is on. And you see something was different, but no, there is actually something going on in there. I think there's something going on in there. It's probably the pin, not all the way in. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to stop it and then come back in a second. Give me one second. All right, yes, I got now the pin connected and you can see the kind of work is back, back in business. So that was definitely the issue. And right now, as you can see, the can looks pretty good, right? So. The reason you see all this shopping here is because I have, well, first of all, the sampling rate. Always when you're using an oscilloscope, make sure that your sample rate is good for the signal that you are reading. Secondly, in this case, 
we need to put a, an active filter. You see it's in one kilohertz. So we're gonna activate a filter and we're gonna put it into three megahertz. This is for CAN network, around what we need to have, uh, even five, let me see, five, oops, that's actually too much, six. <clears throat> let me go back to one megahertz. Nope, that's actually not good, so five. Yeah, five looks good. All right, so we can go up. And this is one thing that I've noticed on um, Picoscope 7. See how I was able to do that? Uh, I activate the filter, but if I go here, oh, actually it works. Sometimes I cannot change the other filter. I have to go out and come back. This is like a little glitch on, on the low pass filter. Uh, we can put, you know, this right here. And we can go five moles, I think that's perfectly for that. And our line is, as you can see, we got, actually, if I put it here, it stops it better. We can see that we have a good uh, CAN network, at least now. But if I try to operate, again, the fuel pump, um, I'm going to move. We know that we have the red, you know, the can network kind of like working good in there. I'm going to move the red channel now into the fuel pump so we can see the activation. And I just drop it. <laughs> but it's no problem. It's going to be a weird capture in there. So sorry, guys, but I need to have both hands for this. All right, so we have that there. <clears throat> Immediately, we can see a little weird glitch on the can bus. Remember, this CAN bus is very fault tolerant. So as long as there's some communication in there, it will work. And we can see because we got the scanner connected and working. Um, I have to raise the voltage on this to like 20 volts because it's now on battery voltage, uh, right? So we are going through the test light and we got, you know, what I'm supplying, which is around 13.28. But so we're going to select the fuel pump into the on position and we're going to execute that. And we can see that it's actually happening, but look what's happened to the camera. We're gonna move this a little bit here. Every time that fuel pump tries to work. So I'm going to stop it. Let me go back to a capture that we can have fuel pump in there, right there. Let me remove all this noise in from here. Move the blue channel app. Look at that spike. You see that spike on the CAN network? Remember, this is a CAN network. So definitely this will completely shut down in the vehicle because now we just don't have a fuel pump. We got some other things. So, and look at the fiber reference. If I stop the fuel pump, the fiber reference goes down. And if I run this again, we can see that the actual CAN network is now working. Again, it has this weird glitch, which shouldn't be there. But this is definitely 100% his concern. All right, guys, so um, this is, again, just a short video, which is like 15 minutes, but I need to, I want to share with all, all of you my testing, how I do it, and then how I, this is an original connector that I created my, you know, connections, powers and grounds and can network. I, defy, I got the fiber references and the sensor grounds so I can connect the multimeter to, so, to see that as a visual confirmation that I have what I need. In this case, we do have a problem with the fuel pump relay causing problems to shut, in, to shut down the complete network and uh, the computer. So definitely I'm going to have to open the computer and repair it. Based on this, I will contact the customer and then tell them, okay, I can repair your computer. It's gonna cost you this much and get the approval for that. If the approvals are done, I will definitely be recording part two for you guys and for the customer as well. All right, guys, uh, I will not take more of your time. Thank you so much. Um, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.